Okay, uh, good afternoon everybody. So it's Friday evening. I'll try to make this presentation as light and entertaining as possible. So my topic for today will be hacking mobile games, closing the gap between Ikambilis and Wales. So a little write out about myself. I'm a associate principal at Vantage Point. I hack stuff for a living. I have several certs like Crisis CT, uh, OSC and a few more. So my most recent research topic is mobile games. So first thing I'll just say, uh, all information presented during this presentation are strictly for educational purposes only. And Vantage Point and the presenter will not be held responsible for any damages and losses due to misuse of information. Yeah, sorry, just need to get, get this out. Okay, so what is Ecombilis? For people who are not familiar, this is Ecombilis. Uh, it's a type of small fish, quite commonly found in Singapore dishes and some Southeast Asia countries. So what does this got to do with our presentation? In gaming, right, there's usually two types of gamers, okay? So the first type is the ones that do not spend any money, but they are called the free-to-play, uh, small time spenders also. We call them the small fish, hence the ikambilis. The other one is the, the other side would be those who spend a lot. Like when I mean a lot, I mean like maybe thousands or tens of thousands per month. It's quite common actually. The major, Gamers that actually have that deep pockets are usually Chinese gamers. So we call them the whales, or in Chinese we call them tu hao. So what happens if you place these two types of gamers together in the same game? This will happen. So yes. Okay, now we need to talk a bit more about what is mobile game mechanics. This is an important concept. Why? Because game mechanics are constructs or rules or methods to interact with the game. And it's important to us because as hackers, we want to challenge this type of rules. So this is a comic. Like for example, uh, in Counter-Strike, I hope everyone knows. So Counter-Strike, you shoot, right? So a weapon could maybe have like 30 ammo, 30 bullets. So that's like a game mechanic. Don't worry, I'll go a bit more. Okay. Like, I'll be using this as an example, uh, Clash Royale. So it's a PvP real time. You deploy your units to try to destroy the other player's buildings. So we'll explore a few mechanics just to give an example, let you, let you all get the gist of it. So like in Clash Royale, right, you can unlock chests. So in this case, like a silver chest will need three hours and a gold chest will need eight hours. This is the rules that is defined by the game. So if you want to unlock a silver chest, you need three hours. Then another one. During battle, right, when you deploy units, you will need enough elixirs, the purple bar. So once you use it, they will diminish. And if you have not enough, you become gray out. You cannot summon any new units. The last one. Okay, just take a look at the tank, the sparky. So when I deploy it, there's this deployment time. And when you want to attack, you will take some time to charge up before you can attack. So this is something like another game mechanic. So you might be, must be thinking, why am I talking all this, right? So this is actually, uh, let you know better what is a game mechanic. You can, something you can relate to. But of course, there are other areas, right? Like online and offline components, like social elements, PvP, shared instance spaces. These are all areas that you can explore further. Okay, next. Uh, this one is a quite common attack surface. So as a game company, what they will do is they will try to address this. So these are the same stuff. The game client, in this case, is the app that you install on your phone. And instead of business logic, I think the more relevant will be game mechanics. I hope this will relate to more people. So, and besides all this, right, the game company have the most powerful or effective mechanism. Now, if they catch you hacking, they will just ban. For this presentation, I will be touching on this too, but not now. I will use live example later. Okay, now, related to my talk, right? So, instead of just jumping in and hacking, we need to have a methodology or idea. The target here is to try to close the gap between the small fish and the whales. To do that, we need to identify the gap first, right? Then I need to, this one I draw one now. Huh? So, okay, let's see. The, this is a very simple diagram that you know the, what is the concept of game progression. 
So you improve current state, then you can complete challenge, you get rewards, and you just repeat and repeat and repeat. And this is like how you progress in the game. I'll give some example. Like some ways you can gauge your current state would be like your character level, your equipment. So once you reach a certain level, you can then attempt like boss raids or quests, which if you complete them, or if you even do better, uh, if you do well enough, you can get into rankings and you can get tiered bonuses. So this is for normal players. How do we address this as if you're, you are a will? You can just shortcut that. You can just cash on it, you can buy cash on the equipment. Then on top of that, maybe you can buy extra entry tickets. Like maybe some people can only enter five times a week. Then you, but you can buy these tickets. You can end up go 10 times a week, get more stuff, progress even faster. And usually, if you are willing to spend that much money, you should be qualified for the highest tiered bonuses, lah, unless you kind of suck in the game. Lah. So that's the rough idea of game progression. Now, we identify the gap. Let's see we, how we can close the gap with real examples. Okay. So today I'll be talking about these two games, Maple Story and King's Raid. Anyone heard of Maple Story? Anyone plays? It's quite new. King's Raid, anyone? No? That's okay. No worries. I'll go through the, both of them. Okay, the first one, Maple Story is the currently number one in grossing for both Apple and Google Play. It's a side scrolling game. You go around, you kill monsters. The global release date, I think, was last month, so it's a really new game. Yeah. And the game developer is Nexon. It's, they have many years of experience developing games. So in Maple Story, right, if you want to progress in a game, you typically kill monsters, do tasks, gain experience. The faster you kill, the more experience you gain per hour. So to you want to kill faster, what do you do? You get to you need to do more damage. You get more better equipment and such. So now I give you an example, right? Because you all don't like theory. So level 1 to 100 in this game typically takes around 30 to 50 game hours. It's okay. So from level 100 onwards is where the real game begins, so to speak. From level 100, you should at least start with an epic level weapon. So plus 1 or 2 weeks of farming, you can get to unique. Then unique after 120 days or so. These are all max within the game. They call it the time gate mechanism. Like they want you to play a certain amount of days before they let you upgrade. Something like this. So weapons are important because higher tier weapons will deal more damage and you can level up faster. But wheels don't like to wait, right? So they can shorten this process. There's mainly two methods for Maple Story. First is either you buy the in-game premium items. Or you can resort to uh, unauthorized third-party sellers. In this case, Mesos is an in-game currency. So, uh, okay, I draw this one. Okay. So this is like a starting point. It's level 100. The blue one represents the whales. The orange represents the Ikambilis. So you can see that at the starting point, both of them level 100, right? The power of the whale should be higher than a normal Ikambili. But the Ikan Beliefs will experience two power spikes. The first one is when you upgrade the one that I remember at one to two weeks, you get your orange one, the unique weapon. And after 120 days, you get the legendary weapon. But this doesn't address this, right? We still have the get. So with this type of get in mind, let's transit into more tech stuff. When you boot up the app, you can see the traffic. So, okay, let me get, this is a server response when you start the app. You can see that, I'm not sure you can see or not, this is a bit small. I'll read it out for you. Uh, the one that highlighted in yellow, they are all http dot dot slash slash 127.0.0.1 port 8080. So this is the local host and this gives indication that it's either a debug code or there's maybe like local web server running on your Android phone or iPhone. But, but my guess is that they had, the developers, maybe they have just rushed to production for this app. Therefore, they still leave some stuff inside. Means that we can maybe find more stuff inside. Generalize, uh, the app itself is non-proxy aware. Might be a security mechanism. They don't want you to just follow the proxy and let you play with the traffic. It's TCP based. It's around 
is typically around 40 bytes long per communication. The server has is hosted in AWS. They do not have domain names. They, you just talk to this EC2 XSX API. So every time you log in or when you change channel, which is an in-game function, think of it like a chat room or no, like mini servers within the server. When you change channel, right, you will talk to a different server each time. And they have a common port range of 7201 to 7206. But I, like I said, right, I'm not going to talk much about network traffic. So let's go to the game client. So when you start the game, the first thing, uh, one of the things that I did was I tried to modify the installed app. And this will pop up. This is like a illegal program has been detected. It's quite common. If you Google search, you can see some of them detect. The conditions to trigger this when you're starting up is either you modify the installed app or if they detect your phone has some funny apps installed, like Game Guardian, which is the cheat engine equivalent in mobiles. So in Android, I tried hooking the Java method that, okay, let me rephrase again. So when you press OK, right, you'll end up uh, killing the process. It's written in a Java code. If you decompile, you can see I'm using Android as an example. So I tried to hook to that method and I tried to kill that. Or I mean, I tried to prevent the killing, but end up it still kills because the process is killed from another place as well. So it's quite complex because usually when I talk about uh, root detection or cheat, anti-cheat, right? It's like in banking apps, once you bypass that one, usually it will work. But in this case, they have queue in depth, defense in depth. So after which, the loadout cannot work, right? So I try to just boot the game normally. And I try to attach when it's running using Frida. Anyone who knows Frida, right? Or if you don't know Frida, it's something like a runtime. You can just attach the process, inject code inside. So upon attaching, uh, the same thing pop up again. So I press OK, you get your queue again. So the, this game has both start when you start up, the, there are some security mechanism and in run time, there's also half. Anyway, so again, I'm using Android. This should be the same for iOS. But if you decompile the app, you go to the path like uh, the ARM v7a. So there is this file that I wanted to point the like IL to cpp.so. So from this, you can see that Maple uses Unity. And there is also this file. What is this file? So IL2CPP is like a feature of Unity that is developed around three to four years ago, quite new. So I'd like to talk a bit more. So people will, the developers, they will code their game logic in C-sharp, top left-hand corner. Then they will compile, go through the process, become C++ code, and become native binary, which we will use, which is the live IL2CPP.so. So, now we know the process, let's try to reverse it. Uh, if you search, right, this is, this IL2CPP dumper is one of the most recent tool done by a Chinese hacker, hacker that lives in China according to his GitHub. Okay, so to do this, to use this tool, right, you need two files, the IL2CPP and the global metadata.dat. So you, on top of that, you need to get retrieve two parameters from this. Why? Because when this one, right? If you want, um, let's see. If you want to reverse, right? You need to put back the stuff that was stripped away. And this stripped away stuff are actually stored inside the global metadata. So what this tool does is you just piece together together, both of them together. Anyway, let's see. Okay, if you throw inside IDA or IDA. Find this code, you get the code. Oh, of course, I already must already because yeah, it's still this is the latest copy. You can just dump it. Then when you execute the tool, what you can get from here is you can get the class name, method name, and few names of the of the code. But you cannot get the source code body. This is like a function of the IO2 CPP. This is the output. Okay, you get three. The first one, the folder. In this case, Maple gave 27 DLLs. So these 27 DLLs compiled into, or actually it's 26, 26 combined into one IL to CPP. Then the second one uh, is 27 because the 27 is something related for the tool to work. Okay. So the next 
file, dumb.cs. Okay, dumb.cs is a neatly formatted file with all the class name, function name, and field name, but they have no code, uh, no source code body. But this file alone has 242,000 lines. So good luck looking through. The last one is a script you can throw into IDA so you can uh, give the your previously decompiled stuff or the symbols. If not, you see the sub underscore stuff. Okay, this is like an abstract of uh, what you can see in the dumb.cs. Maybe it's a bit small, but let me read out the one orange is the method name, which is on attack damage. So the maple's game logic is not as simple as what it initially thought. Like each keyword, in this case, I use attack. I try to search for attack. It gave me 50 or more methods with names that are highly similar, if not identical. Like this, this is just one of the three. Like on attack damage, then it's like function overloading and such. So the tedious part here is that when you decompile, the dumb.cs does not give you the source code. So what I need to do is, let's say I see, okay, I want the on attack damage. What I do, I will take note of the offset, which I didn't put here. The offset, then I need to go to the IDA, the decompile version. Then I need to step through the ARM instructions and see whether that is the function that I want. If that's the function that not I want, I need to come back here, pick another one and repeat. So a lot of back and forth. Maybe it's because this IL to CPP is still relatively new. If you, anyone knows uh, what efficient tool, please let me know. Then I can instead, I can look at source code instead of this. Okay. Currently, or not really currently. The global release was in late July, I think. So the top exploit at the point of time was the cast packet replay. What is a cast packet replay? When you cast skill or when you use a skill in Maple, right, you will send a TCP payload of around 40 bytes to the server to tell them you want to use a certain skill. So if you send once, you can use once. If you send twice, you use twice, right? So what does this impact? In games, right, we have a concept of balance. So like, for example, when you want to use a high level skill or the ultimate skill, you'll deal a lot of damage, yes, but you'll come with long cooldown time. This is like the game balance. You can't just spam, right? So when you exploit this, if you replay the packets of this ultimate skills, you can then bypass the cooldown time. Okay, uh, exploit effectively close the attack power gap. Well, we also need them, right? Because they can, uh, they're really quite strong. Only like, it can't be least like us or like me, because maybe some of you are the wheels that we're talking about. Okay, we need to exploit this, but it's already patched recently. So the patch was, uh, okay, the attack in the wall, right, was literally packet replay. You capture the packet, then you replay the packet. There's no modification. So I tried that method, it didn't work. So the, what I did was I tried to go a bit higher level. So I modified the game mechanics. Then I try to cast my skill. I'll show a video, no worries. By the way, the patch is the 8th of August, I think. So the it was in the wild for maybe two weeks or so for the global server. Okay, this is a video. Before that, before I play the video, the need to orientate. Let me try. Can you see? Okay, at the bottom right hand corner, right, you can see there's four icons beside the sword one. What I would like to what I what would like you guys and girls to pay attention to is this one. Okay, these three dots, right, is the ultimate skill that my character have. You, it comes with 30 seconds cooldown. The other one, the blue one, also like to pay attention to that. That is the another skill, not really the ultimate skill, but just want to showcase. This is a 10 seconds cooldown. So let me play. Let me demonstrate. Okay. Okay, you see. Okay, we are. okay, now when I cast, right, you, did you see this timer appear? Okay, initially it was 30 seconds, now it's 25 seconds, 25, yeah. So if I try to tap it and tap again, at this point of time, you'll get this friendly banner that says currently on cooldown. So same, hey, oops, sorry. This one, same. 
Okay, then I do the same for blue, the blue one. You shoot out a blue thingy. Okay. So in the meantime, while it's waiting for it to cool down, I'm running my exploit in the background. Okay, should be around now. Okay, now I'll cast, repeatedly cast the blue one. Notice there's no more cooldown or currently on cooldown. So then next, what do I do next? Let me try the, this one, the three dots one. So first one I'll do, cast one time, right? You can see I get a long chunk of damage, uh, experience. But the thing is, it's patched on the server side. So you see, I can jump, 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 but this animation comes out, but it's not working. So, I think this is worthy of looking into further. Okay, so the other one, besides exploiting better, right? The next one is top abuse by players. Okay, uh, I think Maple Story because Maple Story M is the mobile version. There is the desktop version, and desktop version is running rampant with bots. Okay, so likewise in this case, Maple M people will like to use macro or bot, and Maple M has this function which is the They'll check whether you're a macro and they ask you like this. They will literally ask you the macro search, the macro detector is detected. So how do I trigger this? Okay, I use an emulator, right? I record my keystrokes easily. Even non-tech people can do it. It's very easy. You just press record, you, then you do whatever you want. In this case, I did a very simple macro. Like I move left, I attack, then I move right, attack. Move left, attack, move right, attack, just being stagnant. So by staying there, you do this, the Mac, uh, the game will detect this, and you end up prompting this. If you don't answer this, then I do not know because I did answer. So if you do not do this for a few times, you either flag something, or in the worst case, I also experienced once, but I didn't show here. I don't have a screenshot. It's the normal Google capture that you see, the one that whereby you need to, uh, like, Click the vehicles that you can see. Click the buildings you can see, right? Maybe your guys are familiar with that. Okay. To combat this, what the game does is they sell you the official board, which is auto battle function. So you can purchase from the in-game premium cash shop five hours of official boarding for 600 crystals. In a conservative estimate, it's around 107 crystals per sing dollar. So you can buy five hours of official boarding for six dollars. But of course we are uh, small fish, right? Small fish don't want to spend money, right? What we can do to bypass that actually is just to do a relatively long macro. This is a macro actually. So my this macro is around one minute long. It's a very tricky issue because macros are not easy to detect. If you read, how much memory do you think the server will actually allocate to remembering the last few moves, right? So as long as you do a relatively long enough, you can bypass that. Okay, now I'll touch on the next game, King's Raid. Okay, this is a somewhat older game, around two years long. Maybe not so popular in Singapore, but more popular in Korea. Okay. So game progression in King's Raid. Okay, we clear game chapters to unlock more side quests. What do I mean? Uh, instead of stages, they call it chapters. So that like you have chapter one, chapter two, up to chapter eight. The more chapters you unlock, you get more side quests. And each side quest kinds of refresh, refreshes daily or weekly. So you can see it's no boss, right? The faster you unlock, the more you can do. You can get more stuff. You can progress faster. To clear more chapters, obviously you need to do more damage. Now let's quantify it again. So chapter one to six takes around two to four calendar weeks because you're time gated, right? Uh, time gated. Anyone knows the concept time gate? It's like every day you can only do this a fixed amount. So they kind the game kinds of predicts or can extrapolate it and know when a certain player can reach a certain stage of progression because they want to control. They don't want you to end too fast. Chapter 1 to 6 takes 2 to 4 calendar weeks. After that, it lasts around 1 to 2 months. You can reach Chapter 7. Chapter 8 was recently released. I don't have the real stats, but from my experience, I don't think it will be any 1 to 2 months. It will be an exponential amount. Of 
course, right? If you are will, you can just clear the chapter eight even within the first month, right? Okay, let's see. The known exploits for this game is quite also quite easily Googleable. If you Google now, you can probably see it. So it, they exist in the form of publicly distributed mods, such as the first one, God Mode. Everyone is familiar with this, right? You will never die. Second one is for people who want, still wants to enjoy the game to a certain extent. You is a two times, five times, ten times your stats, so you still can somewhat enjoy the game. Then the last one is the one hit kill for people who just want to end the game. So of course there are a lot of different mods out there. Now, okay, let's see again using Android as an example. If you open the APK, go to this path, assets bin data manage, you can see a list of DLLs. So for people who are familiar with DLL, you can actually try to inject or edit them. What we are interested in is the one that I highlighted, assembly C sharp dot DL. That is the file whereby all the game logic is. Okay, we first I just take the DLL, I put into a hex editor. See the header, right? 45A, the MZ header. This means that it's a legitimate DLL file. And it doesn't seem to be encrypted because sometimes when you open right, instead of seeing 0000, instead of seeing 000, you may see like FFFFF, or depending on what they do, maybe they exploit it, maybe they encrypt it, obfuscate it. But in this case, they didn't. So we don't need to do like tedious stuff like runtime, you dump the DLL and such. Or what do we do from this step then? You take this DLL, you throw it into a decompiler, then you can see the source code, the code body this time. Full, in this case, in Kingsfield, you can see as everything in clear. They didn't even obfuscate the function names and such, but I won't be showing, of course, because it's recorded. Then, I tried to learn from existing mods. So this is another interesting thing. When I tried to download and try to open up, try to see the same thing, right? They edited the assembly C sharp DLL, but the thing is that they also encrypted their DLL. So it kind of defeats the purpose if I have to decompile their code, uh, their mods. They are not really the normal script kiddies. They just do a POC, then they upload and share. No, they actually do this for business. That's why they need to encrypt their mods or obfuscate their mods. They, if you want to check, you can just Google. You, the keyword is VIP mods. You, there are people who actually pay them to uh, subscribe to their mods. So since I cannot decrypt their mod, uh, if since I cannot learn from them, what I did was I did my own and I managed to find something. Again, I, it's recorded so I can't show you, but if offline you ask me, maybe I can share. Normal, okay, first, uh, let me show. Okay, I pause, right? Okay, uh, if you look at the bottom right, you can see four values, max HP, attack, P defend, M defend. So in this case, my this character, I have around 28,000 HP, 1024 attack, 200 P defend, and 200 M defend. Currently, I'm trying to replicate as a normal user. I will try to challenge a stage whereby I cannot clear at the moment. This game is on three times speed, so it looks very fast. Okay, let me pause. If you take a look at the top left hand corner, you can see this 1853, right? It's actually what uh, the game uses. It's called the DPS, damage per second. It's an indicator of how fast you do damage, but uh, it's also a good indicator for us to know whether there's a mod running. So we can see it hovers around 2000. And at this point of time, you can see my character gray out. It means uh, this character died, and if you go even further, I'll just fail this stage because at this point in time, my characters are not strong enough. So what do I do? I modify them, of course. Okay, now you can, you can see, right? It's very easy to see what I did because you see the last digit is all zeros. So what I did was a times 10 to something. It's not as easy as people will think that, oh, you just find that function, you just edit. I uh, just, I will just say that in games, right, they have a lot of functions. So 
don't, you might just end up doing a UI redress. That means like it may just appear on the UI, but actually it's not the real one. So you must take note. Then let's see. Oh, sorry. Okay. So I'll challenge the same stage. Take a look uh, at the top left hand corner, the DPS just now was hovering around 2000. It's now now doing. So I cleared right, the stage. Okay, so people might be thinking, so if, if so doable, why did the game developers try, uh, did not address this? Actually, they did address this, but not through, uh, the game logic, because it's, this game, you can see, is quite complex, right? If everything you need to talk to the server back and forth, they have not enough time. So, what they will do is, if they detect you, they just block you. Because it's quite straightforward. They have all your stats, right? Like, uh, your current car game state. Then, if you see, if they see you challenge things that you should not be able to clear, You'll just walk you immediately. Okay, that's all. Any questions? Thank you very much, Nicholas. Unfortunately, we don't have any time for questions anymore. Oops. So, I'm sorry. No worries. Uh, but if you do have any questions, please ask them to Nicholas afterwards. Give it up one more time for Nicholas' name. <laughs>